Alright, hello everyone! Today, we're doing a little second channel discussion, and we're gonna talk about AoE weapons. So I'm gonna define AoE right here for those who are confused by the title. AoE is Area of Effect. These are basically weapons that have a big area of effect. And I tweeted out a while ago, a bit after the update dropped, saying, In my opinion, all area of effect weapons right now are underpowered, either by main weapons or their kits. The only exception to this was Machine. Some of these are due to weak or unsynergistic kits, but most of them are due to the main weapon being weaker, and I think they deserve buffs. This isn't to say they are awful, but the best area of effect weapon choices right now are S-Blast 92, with a weak sub and okay special for the weapon, Bucket, which has either a sub it doesn't want, line marker, or a special that doesn't fit the role it plays, Tri-Strike, or the brand new Rapid Pro Deco, which, while good, is a niche for backline with a weaker sub. And Kyo actually added on to this thread saying, you know what happens with AoE is weak? And I kind of guessed it here, but two to three burst and splash to splash. So let's talk about the first part of this discussion. Why is it bad for area of effect to be weak? What does it mean if an area of effect weapon isn't something you want in your comp? Because this happened in Splatoon 2, but Splatoon 2 is different because you didn't really need area of effect weapons in that game because armor was a thing. In this game, area of effect is very valuable. Being able to take fights at angles, being able to poke people behind corners, being able to try and poke people away from advantageous positions that are very difficult for standard weapons to contest in order to open up the map for other players. All of that is very important for AoE weapons to be able to do. So that is really important. When weapons that our area of effect are not good enough, the substitute in this game has been Double Splash. And the reason is because that gives you Burst Bombs on an ink efficient weapon that is strong. This is the only Burst Bomb weapon that you can spam them with since Stamper was nerfed in its ink efficiency. So Stamper cannot spam Burst Bombs. Splash can. And Splash also gets your team in. That doesn't mean Stamper isn't a part of this. In fact, Stamper is usually the third Burst Bomb weapon. Double Splash Sword right now is seeming to be possibly the best comp in this update. It's looking very likely. It may be possible that other stuff can contest it, but it's looking extremely less likely that other comps are going to be better than this comp in upcoming patches. So, that's the main problems. You lack things in your comp that you're able to do, particularly things that open up the map, and two, it means to more of this. So I want to run through and talk about area of effect weapons in the game and what changes I want to see to them in order for them to get better. So that's what this discussion is going to be about. We're going to be talking about what area of effect weapons need buffs, what should be changed, and we're going to cover all of the weapons that I also clarify as area of effect because we're i'm going to try to define that because there are a few weapons that are a bit more fringe so i'm going to go over all the ones that i count for example try saucer i would not count as area of effect but you could argue for it rainy thank you for the five tier one subs much appreciated so let's go here to our patch document and i already wrote down a bit of ideas ahead of time and this is this is for another time so we're going to take a look at these. Area of Effect Weapon Buff. So I just kind of jotted things down to kind of have the basis of a script here. So we're going to cover the basics of what should be changed. So obviously the main area of effect weapons are blasters. So let's talk about blasters first. First off is Clash Blaster. So I noted that this weapon is more of a beginner weapon than anything else. It would not be healthy if this weapon was very good at higher levels. And on top of that, it's just kind of whatever and really hard to make good anyway. So this is the least relevant AoE weapon to buff. However, if I were to try to give it something that would help it maybe be slightly more considered at higher levels, that would not hurt it at lower levels, it would be a slight damage increase. From an indirect of 30 to 32 and 60 to 65. But realistically... I don't think Clash should really be here. So we're going to move on from Clash. Luna Blaster. This one is also doomed, but more because Trisaucher exists. 
So I'm not going to talk about it much either. Having a bit higher direct damage could be useful since they're making the 70 hitbox easier to land. And buffing stamp would help with the Kensa Luna Kit or Zipcaster with the Vanilla Luna Kit. But I don't think either of these two really matter too much. They're probably doomed from the get-go. Blaster. Now, Vanilla Blaster is actually not bad as a main weapon compared to other blasters. So, the reason is because Vanilla Blaster very much is a weapon that kind of benefited from... Hey, I got lucky enough to get buffs during the Splatoon 2 era where they overbuffed things. So Blaster has extremely minimal end lag. Extremely minimal. You can swim quite fast with it. Very easily, very quickly, it's very nice with it. Because in Splatoon 2, they shaved off this thing's end lag by 8 frames. Now it does have a downside. Its blast radius is the same size as Rapids. So it's a bit smaller than range, which is a bit smaller than Luna and Clash and 92 short range. But this blaster is okay as a main weapon. The main issue is its jump RNG. Vanilla Blaster actually has worse jump RNG than every other blaster in the game. Every other blaster has 8 degrees of jump RNG. This one has 10. You, Luna used to also have 10, but they ended up buffing that later. Which is about 20% worse, if I remember correctly. However, because this thing can actually 2 indirect decently, it doesn't hurt it anywhere near as bad as something like Range Blaster. But yeah, its jump RNG is bad. However, this weapon has low enough lag that, like, doing this isn't actually that slow. Right? Like, this isn't actually that slow, you know? Compared to other blasters. Like, even with Luna. Let me show you Luna Blaster. With Luna, this is 4 frames slower. You can see the difference on this, if you pay attention carefully. And any time you can see a difference, you know there's a sizable amount of frames in there. So, the actual problem with V-Blaster is its kit. This kit is so bad, it makes this kit look good. Uh, Bubble is not good right now, and it's especially not good for Blaster. It has no special Blaster combos, while it makes it harder to get up close, getting inside the bubble is still incredibly difficult for this thing to fight. And you also cannot get in and use a bubble. The bubble does not get you in. You have to already be in to pop your bubble. So if a blaster cannot get in, which is something it struggles with as a slayer, then it's not going to do much. And the buffs didn't help bubble a lot. If anything, the larger size made it easier to close the gap onto it. Bubble right now is decent on weapons like Roller. And the reason it's decent on weapons like Roller because Roller will just poke curlings and threaten to ninja squid in, and if it gets it one time, boom, you have a bubble, and you're in. Blaster does not have a way of sneaking in like that on its own. Roller does. Auto bomb for it is okay, but it is the weakest bomb of it for any of the blasters. It'll give you some location effect, but its ability to disrupt enemies is much worse compared to other bombs. And thus, this weapon really struggles to move forward. It also struggles against specials, because Bubble does. So what this weapon needs is a new kit. We need Custom Blaster in the game. Preferably, I would really like it if this thing could maybe get, like, I don't know, Inkjet maybe? If they want to be a bit more tame, something like Trizuka could work with it. Stuff like that. But it needs a different kit. The kit it has right now I don't think will work. If they don't give it a good kit, then they can buff the main weapon. So, whatever. Range Blaster. There's a lot I could say about Range Blaster. Um, but this weapon has indirectly gone worse recently. Not just because 92 is a weapon in the game now, which obviously competes with it, but the other issue is the one saving grace that Range Blaster has is Wavebreaker. Wave Breaker is a really good special that gets range in and it combos with it and makes it an extremely scary weapon to fight. Now Wave has gotten a little bit weaker because there is just more stuff in the air with Inkjet. So the more stuff that does not have to be on the ground, the worse Wave Breaker gets. But Wave is still fine. The main issue is how do you play to your Wave Breaker? Because this is what it's like farming it.
Got it. And, and this is ignoring the fact that this weapon will die. A lot. Because it's a blaster. So yeah, wave is a big strength of this thing. That you will play to maybe twice a match. This thing cannot be 200p. I don't know why it's 200p. This thing's 180. This thing's 180, and then this is just 200 for some reason. Grim and S2, which was Burst Bomb Missile. Burst Bomb Missile, just to repeat it, was 190p. This kit is more expensive than that. Now, suction is meh, whatever, and it has other issues. For example, reliability is difficult, and the jump RNG is terrible. Not being able to jump and shoot really hurts this thing, because when it stays grounded, its mobility looks like this. Which, at higher levels of play, is very easy to get the kill with, if not trade at worst, if you're fighting it. Because it's just not moving very fast, and people at this level are more than capable of moving in and hitting their shots on a weapon that moves this painfully slowly. So it struggles with that a lot. So that's the main issue with it. I don't really know if this is one that will get better because they haven't buffed Range Blaster. But it could use a few things. Mainly though, this weapon could use 180p and it could use a buff on intensify action curves. Making it so it requires less intensify for better jump RNG. Which would actually help Normal Blaster and Rapids as well. Technically, maybe 92, but 92 doesn't really run it. Speaking of which, let's talk about Rapid Deco. Rapid Deco was actually in a pretty okay spot last patch and was starting to see use from very dedicated players. That has since tanked off a little bit. Part of that is because of the other Rapid, but part of it is because they made this thing 210p. Now, this is going to sound very familiar to Range Blaster. So, let's get our inkjet here, and you know, this is a strong special, you know? Like, this is very good. This is a very powerful special with a giant hitbox, and this is without special power-up, and most people run a bit. But let's see how long it takes to get our inkjet. It's not as bad as range, but that's still pretty bad. The other issue this thing has is that it really likes its sub with Torp combos. This is very much a thing the weapon still does in this game. It's weaker than in Splatoon 2 because Torp doesn't really roll as far as it used to in that game. So yes, torpedo combos kind of got indirectly nerfed. But the other problem is doing this drains your tank. And so if you are playing for your good special, which is a thing Rapid didn't care about in Splatoon 2. Your time to get Inkjet, which is already bad without doing this, becomes significantly worse. Right, and that was in a training room where I had full pain on every shot and I wasn't dealing with enemy en any enemies or map. Factor in enemies, factoring in torpedo usage, factoring in deaths and teammates painting over you, and this thing struggles to get Inkjet a lot. Now, I don't hate them making this thing 210p if they want to make the main weapon better. But it being 210 in the spot it's in now is mediocre. It's fine. Like, it's a niche. You can pick it sometimes, and it's not awful. But it's not good either. It's just kind of okay. And unfortunately, the points for special nerf hurt it a lot because Inkjet output was already its problem. So, personally, I think there's two routes you can go. Route number one... Revert 210p. Number two, give it a tad better ink efficiency. Slightly less whiting frames or ink cost. Either of those I think would work. Rapid Pro Deco and Slosher Deco. These are both the same problem. It is the dart. That is pretty much it. Bucket Deco has a really nice special for it. If we can switch to Bucket Deco. I mean, pick this weapon forever, but... No, Bucket Deco's in the game. And Zipcaster on Bucket is really good. And in fact, it actually got a lot better because they did a buff to Bucket where they made its minimum damage 50. And on top of that, this thing is 180p, so it can actually kind of get it. 
So what Bucket wants to do is, like, Bucket will go under a ledge and it'll go, like, shoot people. And then it'll get pushed and it wants to pop a special and then just continue, like, fighting things. And Zipcaster does that. You go around and you do Zipcaster things and then you recall and maybe you die. But, like, the whole point is you go in, you get something, and you continue what you're doing with the Zipcaster. Uh, the problem is, if you don't have Zipcaster and you need to get in, you have this. The only saving grace on this thing is a combo, which is not an entry tool. It's not worthless, but it doesn't help. And yeah, it's movement tools, whatever. It's not what it needs to get in. The other bucket has the other problem. This thing actually has a bomb that it likes to get in. Like, this is good. You know, it's a combo if people aren't running sub-defense for some reason. But, like, that's fine. The problem this bucket has is while it has a better special... The special doesn't have as much synergy with it. If a bucket wants to go and continue its streak, it'll go here and then pop Tri Strike and then it dies because it's just sitting here doing this. Or it'll panic all its strikes, not die, and then it just wasted its special. And then the other player is still fighting it and maybe you win. So, like, the best play for bucket players, if they want to play it, is to play this one, run point two special saver, run comeback. And then just try to use try strikes on the way in. Which is just whatever. And it's fine because Bucket is like an okay, like, the main weapon is really good, I think. Like, I think the ability to reliably 50 damage people at absolute worst, like, from high ground, you know, like this. I think this is really valuable. Like, this is scary, especially with Zipcaster. But the issue is you can't really play to this enough. You can't get in well enough. And you can't do as much when you do get in. I think it's just kind of a problem. I think Slosher somehow needs to either make the sub or special play better to the kit. I don't know how they're going to do that with Tri-Strike. But, I mean, to be fair, Tri-Strike is not the only... Like, our bucket's not the only weapon with this problem. Uh, like, I don't talk about this weapon because it's terrible. But, like, Brella has the same issue. If you're a Brella and you're shielding something and you pop Tri-Strike, you are no longer shielding. And you die. T-Tech runs in and that happens. Stuff like that. Rapid when it's in its close range. It's not as big of a problem as this because it stays back, and this because it has a wall and stays back. But these other four problems have other four weapons have really struggled to mitigate that problem with Tri-Strike. And unfortunately, Bucket is the weapon it hurts the most. Not really, it hurts Brella more, but this weapon's not relevant. This is the relevant weapon that gets hurt the most. Anyway. Back to the last blaster over here, which is 92. So 92 is obvious. The kit needs buffs or it needs a better kit. That's really it. I think the main weapon is really good. I think it is definitely still a high tier weapon. I think it can work. And I think the one positive it has is compared to Tri Strike with Bucket, Reef Slider at least does what the weapon wants to do. Like, it can do slider things, it does have combos with it, it doesn't feel completely awful. I've talked with a few people about it, and in general, the consensus is that slider actually kind of works on this thing. The main problem is that it has sprinkler. Ten is not an AoE weapon, no. Ten doesn't really have much area of effect. So. 92. Its current kit can be saved. Mainly by buffing sprinkler and maybe buffing slider. And then I think it could be something that would be able to be picked more th than people who just one-trick it or two-trick it. At the point it's at right now, though, I don't think it's as worth it. So that's that. Um, I actually don't think I have Machine even on this list. But I'll talk about Machine briefly. So, right now, I can't say if this opinion will hold true or not. It's hard to say. But, I think Machine needed to die like in terms of the spot it was at in the meta i think this thing had to go down it's still good yeah i think it's still good but i think this thing cannot be a top tier anymore i don't think this weapon is a healthy top tier i think it is a healthy high tier when it is a niche weapon or something one tricks can pick and do well with it mainly because it's nice to have this kit compared to other aoe weapons that are much more flexible and help you get in but, this is a weapon, and, and this has kind of always been the problem with Machine as a weapon design, is its skill floor is too high. 
if Range Blaster has the problem of its skill floor, of its skill floor being too high, this weapon's skill floor is too low. The amount of value you could get with this weapon pre-patch while barely knowing how to use it was absurd. And it's mainly because this weapon took Blaster's gimmick of an area of effect, but took away the spacing requirement. And on top of that, you also get to do angles with it. <laughs> like, you not only don't have to space like Blasters don't, but now you also don't have to, like, you have fall off as well to be flexible. Even with your directs, which do have fall off actually, but rarely is that relevant. Now, I think the 5 frame nerf is good because it made a weakness of this weapon, its kill time, more apparent. Like, this thing now actually kills slow, even with two directs. So that's its trade-off now. If you want the stupidly large AoE that doesn't require spacing and can hit over walls, you have to have a lower kill time non-stop. I don't think this weapon needs any buffs. I think it's actually pretty usable. Maybe if the game gets faster, it'll struggle. But I think in the pace it's in right now, it's fine. I don't really think it's something people will want to pick. Unless if you are a machine player and you are good at it. But that is my thoughts on it right now. If the game does get faster, if more faster weapons are picked, if stuff like tack becomes good in the future, if quick respawn stuff becomes better, then yes, I think this weapon might need buffs. But I think more than likely the weapon is fine as it is right now. Let's talk about a weapon that I think most of us assume is fine, but isn't. Explo. I want one of two changes to Explosher. Because Explosher is really interesting in the sense that it's a backline version. Now, Explo is already struggling because Inkjet is meta. This thing does not have a fun time trying to hit 255 hits in a row to kill an Inkjet. And by the way, if it misses one of those 55 hits, the second one won't kill. So, this thing already is kind of screwed. However, I think it has two other problems. Its shot speed is very slow, and its damage to Crab is awful. This thing kind of struggles to fight Crab when it doesn't have Inkstorm up. And even with Inkstorm, it's far from free. What I would like on this weapon are two changes. Speed up the shot speed a little bit to make this easier, but mainly, buff its damage to objects, mainly crab. I think this thing should kill a crab in 390 hits. Like, I think if you 90 a crab three times, it should die. Thing if cooler gets better when there's a cooler open every single set of the NA open top four. The NA open top four is not an indicator of what the meta is. This game has been out for... This update has been out for 12 days, 11 by the time the open finished. And on top of that, most people were using stuff they were comfortable with because of a patch. Tournaments within the first three weeks after an update are not a complete guaranteed indicator of what's to come. Also, Cooler is naturally very popular after updates. Like, we ran it because it worked well for Wiper Deco, and that's what we wanted to play. You'll notice in this open, which yes, we performed less worse in, we pretty much swapped off at almost every game. We ran it in Rainmaker, and outside of that, we played it in one non-Rainmaker match. And we even played Splash in one of the Rainmaker matches. So even if Cooler is the future and it works with our team, I don't think it is, and we personally aren't using it as much anymore. I'm not going to deny it doesn't have potential. Maybe it does. But I think it's a bit of a false sign. Anyway. Also, we have heard the same music playlist for a bit. Let me get the next song. Well, sorry, YouTube can't hear it because last time I had the playlist on a YouTube video, I got copyright striked. So we're not going to... YouTube will not be able to hear this. Anyway. So that brings us to Try, which I don't think counts. And then we have Brushes and Dynamo. Uh, I'm going to be real. Octobrush is kind of bad. <laughs> Like, it's kind of just straight up a bad weapon. It has the Luna problem of Tri Slosher exists, so it's already not looking good. And it just kind of struggles to do things. I don't really care about this weapon too much anymore, which is annoying to say, but better damage, cheaper zip caster is the best thing we can hope for. And maybe a new kit. Hanebrush. 
I think Pain Brush is fine for the most part. But I do think it being stronger would be nice because this is still very threatening over cover. Especially compared to other brushes. Like, being able to do this is very, very good. Like, Brush is very good at fighting with any form of cover. And unlike Octobrush, this thing can do so at a half-decent range. So it's a lot more threatening. Try doesn't need to be nerfed. Other short-range weapons need to be better. So, I think Pain Brush's main problem is that it can't actually get anywhere to do its job as, like, an aggressive area of effect weapon. And I think it has that problem because curling is 70% of your ink tank. It's like, Pain Brush can't rotate around and threaten ledges very easily because it's always recovering ink, and it struggles to move without making that problem worse. So I think this weapon needs to be able to move around and poke ledges without recovering ink half the match. And that brings us to the last weapon of relevant area of effect stuff. Dynamo. Guys, I'm gonna be real. This weapon sucks. This weapon's not good. <laughs> this weapon is very bad. This was a weapon that was originally a painter and it does not paint. That's actually really good painting RNG, funnily enough. There. Look at the difference between that on the left and that on the right. Seriously, look at it. Those are from the same weapon. That is not okay. The fact that RNG determines if my flick does this or this is a problem. And it's especially sad like how Range Blaster's Jump RNG problem is sad, is because this consistently paints like this and flicks like almost twice as fast. I mean, look at this. How is Dynamo ever going to compete with this? That weapon is faster flicking and more flicking. Now, Dynamo can be unique because Dynamo, compared to its paint, is also supposed to be threatening. Except it's not. The damage on this thing is terrible. I want you to look at the distance I'm at. I'm about two, maybe closer to two and a half lines away. And I can barely get more than 40 damage. A tiny bit closer, and I can get better DPS on the weapon that's not supposed to have it on this flick. Like, yeah, it's five less damage, but look how much faster this is. And the painting range isn't even that much different. Yeah, maybe if your RNG's lucky, you'll get a tiny bit of paint further away. And again, that's a good Dynamo RNG. So Dynamo's paint is bad. Its damage is awful. Like, it straight up does not actually apply much damage with its horizontal flicks. And that's not even getting into the worst part about this weapon. The worst part about this weapon is this attack. Vertical flick is awful. And I'm aiming down to try to get the better damage. That's a thing. This is pathetic. This attack is 61 frames for the hitbox to come out. That is over a second. And if you use it at a distance, you don't even two-tap people.
even think Dynamo's kit is the problem. Tacticooler on this thing is nice to go more aggressive. Like, Dynamo wants to do that, and it benefits from the extra mobility quite a bit. Sprinkler, in theory, does help its paint. But goddamn, it does not actually do damage or paint. And on top of that, anytime you squiddle or surge, you're forced to do the shit attack. Imagine if you could jump off a wall with this. But you can't. You do this. The main weapon is bad. It needs to paint better, and it needs to deal more damage, and Vertical Flick needs to actually do something relevant to the game. And on top of that, this game has now added Big Swig Roller, and it has added Pain Brush. Both of which are similar to Dynamo. Pain Brush does the fighting Dynamo wants to do better than it, but has similar ink efficiency and paint problems, though not as bad paint. And Swig has the good paint, but while it has less damage problems, it now has a niche of being able to damage objects well. This weapon is worse attributes of two weapons we put in the game. Gold Dynamo will not fix this. Not that it shouldn't happen, but Gold Dynamo is not the problem. A Dynamo kit with a good kit will not save this thing. Maybe with a good kit it would be picked on Flounder Zones and Humpback Zones. That's it. That's all we got. For the amount of speed the weapon has, it certainly lacks any reward for it. And in a game where being slow is this bad, that sucks. I think Dynamo is a low-tier weapon in this game. I thought it maybe had potential to be mid-tier at the start of it, but I can confidently say this is a low-tier. And yeah, this thing can't cooler cycle like MZAP can. So even if cooler did pick up, this would never be the weapon you pick. It would always be try or zap. If the main weapon's better, that could change. But the main weapon is terrible. So that's the state of AoE. Oh yeah, and try stringer. I don't know. Try stringer's weird. It's kind of AoE, kind of not. Maybe give it a better kit. Maybe give it a few small buffs like strafe speed. I don't know. That's a story for another time. And that's the state of AoE for me. I think that most area of effect w weapons do not provide the reward for the difficulty they have. I think they have unnecessary weaknesses, and I think as a whole they are just too underpowered. I think they should get better. Out of this list, if you want to pick an AoE weapon, your best option is Vanilla Slosher and try to get around the Tri-Strike problem, 92 and try to get around the Sprinkler problem, or Long Rapid and maybe try to w make it work everywhere and have fun trying to compete with Ballpoint instead of just using it as a niche. The only thing I think we'll see being common is Long Rapid as a niche. I don't think the Bucket players are going to stick with their weapon. I think they're going to do Swords instead because you can run Stamper with the Double Splash and that's common anyway. And I don't know if any other Blasters are going to be insane enough to invest into 92. I'll do it if my team wants me to. Because I think it's worth it. But who knows. And I don't think much other people are going to. Nor do I think the option should have to be this extreme. Out of all the area of effect weapons, I think Rapid Pro is solid, Bucket is solid, and 92 is solid as main weapons. I think all of the others have underpowered main weapons. Oh yeah, except for Blast, maybe. This might also be a thing we have to see when it gets a real kit. But right now it is a terrible kit. Machine is a meh main weapon, it just has a god kit. So it ends up being okay, because it has Fizzy Bomb and Booyah Bomb. So like, that alone will always give it reasons to be picked. That's just a good kit. Especially when there's no other Booyah option in the game that you can pick. Like, none of the other Booyah weapons are relevant. Like what? You want a Booyah Bomb, what are you gonna pick? Where the hell is Booyah? What are you gonna pick? Aerospray? Hydra? Forge? Gluga? Gluga and Hydra could maybe have niches, to be fair. But they are not going to output a lot of Booyah Bombs. Aerospray will not be able to fight. And this thing does not get more Booyah Bombs than this weapon does. So you might as well have the machine. Yeah, because this thing's 210. Somehow. 
Also, just a reminder, this thing is 210. And this isn't. So yeah, hopefully Double Splash and a bunch of Burst Bombs don't completely take over the game. Hopefully the devs don't over-nerf Burst Bomb when it's a symptom of a larger problem. And hopefully Area of Effect weapons get better in the future. That's my hopes.